Hey everyone, welcome to GeForce. My name is Carter and I'm going to be your teacher today. Now before we get into anything, I want to explain our culture here at Springs Church. We have a culture of LAF. And LAF is an acronym for L-A-F. And that stands for love, acceptance, and forgiveness. See, here at church, we want to love everyone that comes through our doors. We want to show them kindness, whether it be giving them a compliment or just helping them out by maybe buying a snack for them. We want to love everybody here. We also accept every person that comes here. We want to accept people no matter what their difference is. You may love basketball and somebody loves hockey. Well, they can still accept each other even though they have differences. We also want to forgive everyone. See, when you forgive people, it not only helps them feel love, but it also helps you feel free to love other people more when you have no grudges. Hi everyone, my name is Joni and I wanted to pop in here and tell you guys about a special opportunity that we have here at Springs Church. For the month of November, we do something called Heart for the House. And what that is, is um, you guys know about tithing in our classes, right? So tithing is giving a portion of, of the money that you have to the Lord. So Heart for the House is pretty much just like that, except it's going above and beyond what you would normally give and give a little bit extra to the Lord. And that is so cool because we can see how God blesses each and every one of us as we give our tithes and offerings to Him. So in our activity bags that we hand out every week, we are going to have a sock right in that bag. So what you guys can do is you guys can find change around the house, whether it's going through the couch cushions and finding loonies and toonies and change and all that stuff within the couch, or if you um, do a special task for your neighbor and they give you some cash for it, or even some allowance, um, whether you sell old toys that you don't really use anymore, uh, or even going into your savings. However you get that money and put it into a sock, you can bring it into church, and then we are going to put your name on a little heart that we we're gonna have cut out, and then we're gonna put it on a house. And as the month of November goes on, that house is gonna fill up with a bunch of hearts, with a bunch of people's names on it. And that is what we're gonna do for Heart for the House in the month of November. And that is gonna be so exciting. If you guys live a little bit too far away to bring your sock offering into church, maybe ask an adult how you can get involved. Maybe, you're, uh, maybe the adult in your life um, can give online for you. And then that way you can still be a part of Heart for the House. Thanks for listening to my special announcement. And now we're going to jump right into praise and worship. So everybody stand up on your feet and let's praise God together. Feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And when my heart is feeling empty out, you fill my cup. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you for the way you love me. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you. Say things. 
That was some amazing singing, everyone. I love seeing everybody praise and worship God together. This month, we're going to be learning about gratitude and how we can show it to God, our friends, and our family. See, what is gratitude, though? Gratitude is letting others know that you know that they've helped you. See, we get help from other people all the time, whether it be somebody giving you instructions on how to do something, or maybe one of your friends is helping you with a video game and how to beat a level. People help us all the time, and we can show gratitude by telling them, hey, thanks for helping me. Before we start learning more about gratitude, we're going to play a game. The game we're playing is called Thankful Countries. Now what this game is, is we'll have two flags on the side of the screen, and we have to guess which thank you phrase belongs to which country. All right, let's get started with our first one. The first word is gracias. Hmm. Well, we have Mexico and Poland. Hmm, gracias is Spanish, and 
people in Mexico speak Spanish. I think it's going to be Mexico. Let's see if we're right. Hey, we're right. Awesome. All right, let's go with our second word. It's cheers, mate. Now that we have England and Brazil. Cheers, mate. Hmm. I'm going to say England. Let's see if we're right. Hey, I got it. It's England. Okay, now for a third one. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. It's France and Bolivia. All right, I don't know much about Merci beaucoup. Uh, let's say Bolivia. Let's see if we're right. Oh, it's France. Well, we'll get next time. All right, next up is grazie. That's in Italy or Uganda. Grazie, well, I've been to Italy before, so I know this one. It's Italy. We got it right. Good job, everyone. All right, now for our fifth word. Domo arigato. Domo arigato. Oh no, this is a hard one. Okay, it's either Japan or Korea. Oh, those ones. Oh, I'm going to say Korea. Oh, no, it's Japan. Well, that was a close one, though. Okay, let's see our final word. Danke. Now, is that one Germany or is it from India? Danke, danke. Um, hmm. I think I know. It's going to be Germany. Oh, we got it. Good job, everyone. Thanks for playing with me. It was so much fun. Now you know how to say thank yous in so many different countries. That's going to help a lot because we want to say thank you to everyone that helps us. Now, if we're going to learn more about thank yous. What better way than to show it with the Bible? Let's look at the screen for our Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing. I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. And what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've got to be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar and then stopped, a sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch. Her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. 
One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world, along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Elsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. The next image showed another table top-loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa, what are you thinking? I guess... I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different, seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. Ilsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Ilsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for. That was an amazing video. I love this story where we talked about 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says, give thanks whatever happens. That's what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that Jesus is in my life. You know, he helps me with so much. Whenever I have something bad happen, I can always talk to him and he listens to me. He shows me this incredible love. Now, in 2020, there has been so much going on. And we can learn from that, that no matter in life, there's always going to be different ups and downs. You know, in life, we can always talk to God and we can always be thankful for what he does for us. Because whenever there are ups and downs, God's here to help us back up. So we can give thanks to him. And that's why it is so important to keep talking with God and keep reading the Bible so we can have a close relationship with him. God doesn't bring bad things into our life. You know, he's a amazing, loving God. And there may be things that are bad in this life because the world isn't perfect, but God is, and he wants to help us through every situation we find ourselves in. When he says, give thanks whatever happens, He's not saying to give thanks for the situation that we're in. He's saying, let's give thanks for what he's doing in our lives, even when we're in those situations. Remember, you always 
have something to be grateful for. Now, our relationship with God can bring us joy no matter what we're going through. Let's give thanks to God for listening to us whenever we have a bad day. Now, we can always go to Him and talk, and He'll make us feel so much better because He wants to listen to us because He loves us. Now, I want everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes, and we're going to pray together. Dear God, we are so grateful for everything that you've done in our lives. We're thankful that we can count on you no matter what's going on around us. You never change, and you always love us. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior so that we can have a relationship with you that will last forever. We love you, and we're so grateful that we can trust you no matter what. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We've learned so much about how God loves us so incredibly much. You know, He loves us so much that He sent His own Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us so that whatever we might have done wrong, you know, God forgives us for that so that we can live with Him. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart yet, then I want to give you guys a chance to do that today. So I want everyone to bow your heads and your, close your eyes. And if you want to ask Jesus into your life today, you just need to repeat this prayer after me. All right, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's get started. Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe in you. Please forgive me. Help me to grow every day and to be more like you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. That is amazing. You know, God is celebrating in heaven right now that he has a closer relationship with you. That's awesome. So if you've made that decision today, please reach out to us by emailing kids at springschurch.com or reach out to us on social media. We would love to get you a Bible and to provide you with some of our other resources. So I've had so much fun hanging out with you guys today and learning more about God and learning more about gratitude. You know, next time, bring some of your friends out so that they can learn more about God and we can have such a great time together. Have a great day.